Oh, uh, peace, family. Peace. Y'all not used to seeing Brother Rich early, huh? Y'all used to me coming in, coming in a little late. I'm a little early on y'all tonight. Peace to the family. Since we're a little early, we're going to let the people join, gather, log in. Make sure you share. Let me just tell the people um, text in my text community and tell them I'm live right now, family. But yeah, do what you got to do, family. Let everybody know we are now live. We're going to have a great discussion tonight. It's nothing to be afraid of, but it's a necessary conversation and discussion with us moving forward into this new paradigm. So uh, do what you got to do, family. Get comfortable. Whatever you do to get comfortable. I got brother Yosef, man. Welcome back, my brother. Yes, yes. Peace, family. Peace. Glad to be here. Indeed, man. The shows we, the shows we have done this year, brother, the people have absolutely loved the shows we have done this year. I think we did about three, three or four, yep. man. I mean, people loved it. Glad to hear it. People loved it. Let me just text these out of this group. Uh, so you you was just in Texas, you was telling me, right, uh, brother Yosef? Yes, yes. Down there visiting some family, checking things out. And uh, it was a good time, man. Good weather. Way better than the weather we got up here in uh, upstate New York, man. And uh, so, yeah, wonderful, man. Wonderful. Excellent. Excellent. All right, family. So um, let's uh, let me see what's going on in the chat. What, what y'all talking about in the chat? Let me see what's going on in the chat. Yeah, y'all see we a little early today. All right. That's why I'm letting the people log in. I know it takes a little time. Uh, but uh, let me get to a few commercials, family. Um, some black businesses, and we will be right back. We'll get started when we, when we get back, family, all right? Hey there. Had a bad dream? I have dreams too. Some parts are scary and some parts are fun. Always remind yourself, it's only a dream and everything will be okay. I had a dream about being in a forest too. Check it out. My pet Petey was with me. Order your copy of Kayla Petey and the Forest on Amazon today. Hey family, this is King Simon here to tell you about Cosmic Alignment Workshop. That's right, the Cosmic Alignment Workshop in the West End of Atlanta at the Zen Bar. That's right, go to zenbar.org and get your tickets. We only have 33 seats. That's it. And then we might do a live stream. We're not sure yet, but I'm telling you, it's happening on Sunday, May the 15th, $99 early bird tickets, $155 regular tickets. I'm telling you, it's going to be Coach Helen, Ellison Nedra, and yours sincerely, King Simon in the building, dropping numbers, spirituality, spiritual business, and all of that. Remember, align yourself with all the tools to succeed with Cosmic Alignment using spiritual modalities. Go to www.zenbar.org. That's www.zenbar.org. All right, family. And also, quick reminder before we get started, if you want to be notified for when Brother Rich goes live with these shows, because sometimes YouTube doesn't notify you, you're a new subscriber maybe, thank you for subscribing, text the word RICH, the word RICH, R-I-C-H, text that word to 646-760-7800. All right, family? So once again, text RICH to 646-760-7806, family, all right? And with that being said, Brother Yosef, man, this uh, topic tonight is uh, an important one, uh, a conversation that a lot of people are afraid of. Uh, to some, it's a it's an introductory conversation to others. It's an advanced conversation. Um, before we get started, I know, man, a lot of people got scared. I see some people got scared of the cover that I put up. I had a, a, a melanated sister with horns on, horns on her head. And um, I know uh, Beyonce, she has wore horns in, on her head in some of her videos. And when people see that, they automatically associate horns with the devil and being demonic. So could you, before we start, what, What's the deal with the homes, the spirit realm, and 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 is it is it evil? Is it not? Talk to us about horns real quick, my brother. Yes, yes, absolutely, man, absolutely. So uh, when you're dealing with the horns, you're dealing with signals. You're dealing with antennas. These are antennas that can pull energy down from different spirit worlds uh, or different types of energy, depending on what type of animal horns you're using. Um, if anybody saw the uh, Marie Laveau, um, what is it called? Uh, American Horror Story. Right. Uh, with mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. started out with the black man with horns on his head, and she was taking his blood so she could look younger. Mm -hmm. Like, it told the truth from the beginning. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. So, in the beginning, you saw the Baphomet. So, th these are symbols to scare 
low conscious people who don't really understand the science or the occult side to symbols. You know, there's nothing mm. to be afraid of because I could promise your people was doing it first. Mm. It's just mm. we've been conditioned with Christianity and religion until we think that they're doing something evil. I'm one of those people, brother. And I don't know if everybody agree. I don't believe in good and evil. I have a problem with good and evil. I believe good and evil is a perspective, right? A perspective. It's, be, it's, it's based on what you believe it is. Now, I believe in right and wrong based on the laws of the universe, right? Based on the laws of the universe, you have the, the right side of the laws of the universe and the wrong side of it. And you can break universal law and there's consequences for that, right? But evil is, in my opinion, is more of a perspective of a person who, uh, you know, who, who looks at it. So, yeah, it's not evil at all. It's just a, a symbol that's talking to your subconscious mind. And mm. because of our religious mind, we call it the devil. That's what it is, brother. Indeed. Excellent. Excellent, my brother. All right. I see the people filling in the room. Family, when you come into the room, uh, make sure you hit the like button. That is very important for the algorithm of the show. We want to get this type of information spread out to as many people as possible. Um, you know, we've been lied to so much. Um, so, yeah, we want to get this out there, family. Let's start this talk on the Astro Realm, uh, Brother Yosef. So, like I said, a lot of people are, uh, you know, think it's in in introductory stuff. Some people think it's advanced stuff. What exactly, I mean, is the Astro Realm as simple as when I go to sleep at night and whatever I dream about, I'm automatic, wherever I go, that that's the Astro Realm is just the dream world. Is that the same thing as the dream world? Uh, that's just a piece of what the Astro Realm is. The mm. astral realm is also your imagination. Mm. It is the place where anything is possible. We also call it time and space. We call it the fourth dimension. There's a mm. lot of terms for the for what we call the astral plane. Some people may mm. even call it the spirit world, right? But the mm. spirit world has different levels because you have a fifth dimension, a sixth dimension, a seventh dimension, an eighth dimension, and all that other stuff. So as 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 people who if you claim to be, if you're watching this show right now, apparently you're into magic. You're into your you're you're into your people's sciences, which is magic, which is the highest form of science, magic, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're watching this, the first thing you gotta understand as a magician is that when you do magic, you're simply pulling something from the fourth dimension, or what we call the astral plane, by way of your intent. Once again, you have to use all the forms of the fourth dimension to even pull something down here. Intent, mm -hmm. once again, is imagination. You know, you're imagining what you want to manifest while you're doing a spell or a ritual, okay? But it's all in your mind. But because we are such a low consciousness, we must use the five elements and different things like that to manifest into this world. But just like Monta Chia talks about and a lot of other teachers, the five elements are in your body already. So if you study the mystic side of magic, you have the, the uh, you know, you have the, the uh, side that is, you have the magical side of spirituality and you have the mystical side of spirituality. If you study the mystical side, you're going to become God and you're going to become the ulcer. You're going to become the manifestation of God, right? You could do it on the magical side too, but magical side to a degree kind of, kind of it's, it's for beginners because the magical side, you're going to use a lot of tools, but on the mystical side, you are the tool. So what do I mean by mystical side? I'm talking about the Hindus and the, and, uh, not Hindus, but the, the people, mostly this type of magic is practiced across seas in India. OK, so when you're dealing with India, when you're dealing with uh, certain parts of Africa, you'll see these these uh, shamans and these gurus that practice this mystical uh, type of magic. And what you do is the five elements are inside of your body. And you can go. I put up a video on my Patreon of a man who was just shaking his hand in India and all these gold necklaces was coming out of his hand. He was giving to his, his students mm. in a wheelchair. Mm. Right. He was getting ready to pass away. But before he went, he was just shaking his hand. His consciousness was so powerful. With the elements in his body, he can manifest something from the spirit world into the physical because it's nothing but a program. Mm -hmm. it's nothing but a program. So as a magician, the first thing you must understand is that the astral plane is your playground. Mm -hmm. It is where you can make anything happen, but you must know how to pull from it. So mm -hmm. you're just putting a bunch of stuff in a pot and calling on Shango or entities to make stuff happen. That's how it looks. What you're really doing is pulling something down from the fourth dimension. Mm -hmm. You said before, all you really need to do is attach it to a fork, to an earth element. If you're going to attach what you're trying to do in the astral plane to something on the earth element, you pull it down a lot faster and quicker. So as a magician, 
as as a person who practices spirituality, you must understand the after. That's one of the most important things about spirituality. You must understand what the astral plane is and how it how it affects you. So <clears throat> when you're dealing with um magic, it doesn't really happen here. It's manifested here. We got to understand that it's manifested here. We're doing all this stuff, but it, the magic doesn't really happen until we until we pull it down. That's when you say, "Oh, it works. It works." Once it comes from the fourth dimension. So that's what the actual plane is. It is the imagination. It is a place where anything is possible. I like to call it the spiritual internet because through the fourth dimension or through the astral plane, you can do so many things. Time travel, right? You can go to different realms of existence and primordial. You can do all these different types of things just by accessing the fourth dimension. So I want people to understand that more than anything. So you compare the astral realm uh, to the imagination. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, people don't look at the imagination as being uh, dangerous, but people will look at what we'll call the astral realm dangerous, and they say, you know, you got to protect yourself. You got to be careful. So why, when we refer to the astral realm, we tell people you got to protect yourself, but kids use their imagination all the time, and they good. All the time. Mm -hmm. all the time. That's why we have to be have the heart of a child. It's not about having the mind of a child, it's about having the heart of a child. Okay. Uh, it's the difference between the brain and the mind, mm -hmm. right? Connected to the heart. So. Having a heart of a child is very important because that because children don't worry like a baby, a baby's aura is so thick and powerful. You don't see babies getting possessed by demons. You might have heard about something one time, but you don't really hear it because ghosts don't can't really affect the baby. It's too pure. The mm. vibration of the baby is too high. Mm. So if you can forget your heart like a child and stop letting the things about the world bother you. You'll be more magical than you than you. And with the, the mind you have today, you'll be more magical than you can ever imagine. So it's about having a high vibration, thinking good thoughts all day. Some people may call this corny. Some people may say that's whack. It is what it is. It works, though. Mm. It works, though. When you look at these grand masters, they are always in a, a, a state of high consciousness, which is related to a high vibration. So being like a child is definitely the key. Um, and, and children are always in their imagination. They're, they're, they're naturally magical. Mm -hmm. You know, which goes to why Walt Disney created the magical kingdom. Uh, mm -hmm. Imagination means the magical kingdom. That's what the, you break down imagination. I imagination, the mm -hmm. magical. So Walt Disney, who was also an occultist, knows the power of when all these children gather in this area where you have a Moorish castle, right? Who dealt with, they dealt with magic too. He knows what he's doing as an occultist when you bring all these children with an imagination to this area. Mm -hmm. And that's Disney World still standing to this day. Mm -hmm. No, I definitely that's that's uh that's so amazing that you said that having the heart of a child and and and, and that's how you're able to uh travel, you know, um safely in this realm. I remember one time having a conversation with Blue Pill and he said that because of our conditioning and programming, we can't even imagine without thinking about the white man oppressing us. So it's like you be sometimes you'll try to imagine something. You'll be like, nah, you can't do that because this will happen in this person, and then they're gonna come back and they go, the chemtrails is gonna be there. Then after the chemtrails, that you don't know say all that's in our mind. So yeah. it's like some for some of us, it's hard to even imagine, brother. Yeah, you're right, man. You're right. My, my father in law is like that. You know, the goddamn yeah. man is doing this to me, doing that. Yeah. I'm just gotta change the way you think. But yeah. you can't blame a person who came from an area of oppression and they saw things I didn't see growing up. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, you got people got to change their mind because the biggest enemy is you. It took me a long time to realize that who the devil really was and who the enemy really was. It's me. I'm the enemy. Nobody can stop me from doing what I want to do in this world. Mm -hmm. You know. So once we get out of that victim mentality and stop blaming people, now we can evolve. We can become a God. Don't sit around blaming people. We mm -hmm. said God manifests what he want. Pair point blame. Mm -hmm. Manifest what he want. That's what the, that's that's what we got to do. So. Yeah, we, that, that mentality is so bad that people have, man. Like, like we got to stop doing that, bro. <laughs> it gets crazy, man. It gets crazy, you know. Since the astral realm is, uh, you know, you're, you're comparing it to the imagination, is the astral realm a realm, or is it just your individual realm? Like, everybody has their... That's a great question, brother. That's a great question. Um, oh, I think you froze for a second there. Thing, brother rich uh froze yeah yeah bear with me family no i just man listen i just got this i'm in a, i'm still in georgia i just got this wi-fi and 
they told me I need an extender now. So now I'm in a room and the Wi Fi is not even working properly, family. So okay. no problem, no problem. Yeah, bear, bear, bear with us tonight, family. It might cut in and it might keep freezing. But um, what I was saying is, is the imagine is the astral realm more of a realm that we all go to, if, or, or is it just everybody's individual realm? Is it like an individual thing with that's different for everybody else? That, that's a that's that's a great question because. This planet, it, the astral realm was created by our imagination. It was created by our imagination. Just like we talk about a lower realm of existence. Lower realms were created by people. There's no God that created that and put you there. You are the God that created and you put yourself there based on your consciousness. Mm -hmm. So the astral realm is so vast until mm -hmm. everything you think about already exists in the astral plane. Mm -hmm. Everything you want to think about and everything you have thought about. Your worst fears exist in the astral plane. Mm. The dreams that you want to come true for your family, for yourself, it's already real. That's mm. why when you think about something, and I saw this, a post about this on uh, Instagram, I said, man, this is so true. When you think about what you want, the universe splits and allows you to make a decision. And this is why parallel worlds exist. Parallel worlds, worlds really exist so that you can make the right, you can go the way you need to go no matter what decision you make. You're always going to go the way you want it to go. Mm. So whole life before you're born is already predestined. And based on the decision you make, which you already know you're going to make, the universe already exists for you in that area. So there's a part of me that never became spiritual, that never woke up and stayed in church. He mm. still exists in another dimension. Mm. And in this dimension, I became an occultist, a metaphysician, a spiritual person, and I teach people. But I could have sure enough been that other person. It's all mm. based on reality. So the astral realm is a place where anything is possible. In all forms of yourself, parallel worlds and everything exists in the astral plane, including the earth you live on. The earth you live on is nothing but a copy of the astral plane. So it mirrors the third dimension. But if you like, I can go to somebody's house in the third dimension, which I've done many a times. You can go to a person's house. You can visit somebody and you can actually. But what's going on when you go to their house is more happening. So if you walk down my street right now in the astral plane, you could do that. But at the same time, you might see a dragon flying in the sky. You might see people that look like they're from the 1970s walking down the street. Mm -hmm. Look up the zombies. You might see that because there's more going on based on what's happening. Now, when you go to a lower realm, you may see less things happen. You may see things look more abandoned because mm -hmm. people's consciousness is so low in that realm, there's nothing happening. So that's kind of what the astral plane is. Yes, it, yes, your own, you, you create it with your own mind, and it's also. What you can think of and what you can't think of is, is just an astral plane as well. You know, I've heard accounts, uh, you know, being in the spiritual community for so long where sisters would be like, yo, um, yo, I got to stay away from that brother. He tried to uh, have sex with me in the astral realm. And I heard that more than one time where sisters be like, yo, he tried to get at me in the astral realm. He was trying to have sex with me. So was it like, it, 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 when I'm young, I'm like, I remember me and another dude was like, damn, that dude, that dude, he did that, he did that. This is when I was younger. But then as I go, I'm like, hold up, is that just her mind projecting that? So if a sister came to you and said, such and such try to have sex with me in the astral realm or something like that, what would you tell her? You tell her that's just your subconscious mind? What would you tell her? <laughs> you know what, bro? I'm going to tell you, man. So I've been blamed for so many things in the spiritual community. I'm blamed for, 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 for taking people out of here. <laughs> I've been blamed for her. For, 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 for uh, all kind of stuff, you know, beating up people in the spirit realm. Oh, man. Um, but one thing about me, I'm the same person no matter where I'm at. And if a person is obsessed with you, or if a person doesn't like you, right? Mm -hmm. A person of me could come, an uh, uh, entity could pose as me, right? And mm -hmm. actually beat them up mm -hmm. and say, Yosa beat you up. He beat you with a brick all night, mm -hmm. upside your head. Or brother Yosa tried to touch you. This could be an entity. Brother Yosef ain't that type of person, but there mm. are people out there that will do those type of things. Mm. We all know about dark sorcerers and dark magicians that will come around you and they will try to steal your energy at night. Mm. They will try to touch you at night. You know what I'm saying? I don't had a few try to jump on me at night. Mm. I had to defend myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm be honest, a few trolls, I, I popped up a day house, you know what I'm saying, to mess with them, mm. you know what I'm saying? Mm. When they were talking about stuff, but they didn't think that Brother Yosef would pop up. But at the mm. same time, and to defend myself spiritually, because I've been attacked spiritually by a lot of people. But to defend myself, yes. But person heart, uh, there are dark magicians. I want to warn people. There are dark magicians out there that will 
come up to you and try to do things to you, you got to protect yourself. And that's why my Patreon, different things, I teach people how to protect their house and protect themselves when they're asleep, protect their children, because there are people out here that will try to harm you, family, and will try to do things to you. So, yeah. But always remember, family, every person that comes to you, it may not be that person. It could be an entity that you're dealing with that's posing as that person that's trying to do something to you. Mm, indeed, indeed. Um, let me ask you this. A lot of people, you I've heard a lot of people say that uh, dreams are more real than this reality. Um, do you feel as though the astral realm, dreams, third dimension, what we call this reality, it's all an illusion? Or do you think one is more real than the other? That's a good question. That's a great question, brother. I believe with all my heart, the actual plane is more real than the third dimension. Mm. For the simple fact that you're free there. Mm. You're more free. Mm. So I have to be, that has to be more real than this if I'm free there. But we're trained, mm. that's an illusion, and that's why you're more free in that dimension. That's not mm. true. This is a hologram. It's been proven by scientists, it's been proven by so many people. This is a computer simulation. This mm. is not, this is the lowest form where a spirit won't even go to, if possible. Mm -hmm. and, and the body broke down for so many years, this is where you trap the gods, trap them in the human body. So the fourth dimension is more real than the third dimension. The fifth dimension is more real than the, than the fourth dimension. The truth is though, all the way up till you get to about the eighth dimension, all this stuff is an illusion. The true spirit world is not until you break out of that, until you break out of these realms under uh, above the demiurge. Once you get away from him, and get past those realms, you go to what they call the overworld, which is the true spiritual world, which is where your soul comes from. Your soul doesn't come from the fifth dimension. Your soul doesn't come from the sixth dimension. It doesn't mean that you didn't spend some time there, right? Your soul comes from the primordial world, which is beyond the demiurge and beyond this illusionary world that's here. So yes, family, from about the eighth dimension is down, this is all an illusion, but the illusion gets more real. Mm -hmm. So the lower you go, the, the more fake it is. The higher mm -hmm. you go, the more real it is. And that's how that goes. So, so brother Yosef, this is a great conversation, family. I hope y'all enjoying it. We about we got about thirteen hundred people in the building. We just getting started, family. Um, hit the like button. Like I said, that's important, family. Hit the like button. Uh, share the video. Let people know we are on live, brother Yosef. If we're in the if this is the third dimension, the astral realm is the fourth, or the imagination realm is the fourth dimension. What's the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth dimension? Can you, can, can okay, you know, that's a good question. Yeah. Good question. So. Yeah. Fourth dimension is the realm of imagination, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to. The fifth mm -hmm. dimension is the dimension of pure life. So the beings that live in the fifth dimension, they generate their own life. They don't need food and water. They this is where you talk about your light body, your spiritual body, the Merkaba, right? Mm -hmm. That's when you that and that's considered in the spiritual world. If your planet doesn't exist in the fifth dimension, you're not even considered a real planet in the spirit mm -hmm. world. They don't even consider you real. They consider you a lower entity, a lower fake realm. That's what they consider you. So the fifth dimension is kind of where it all starts at. That's the realm of light. Mm -hmm. The sixth dimension is kind of where the ascended masters go. So when you talk about the Buddhas and the Ramakrishnas and you know the the Tahutis and stuff like that, they all exist mm -hmm. in what you call the sixth dimension. Mm -hmm. The sixth dimension is a place where teachers live, but also where you talk about the immortals. So this is where the demigods and lower level gods live on the seventh dimension, mm -hmm. and all the regular gods too, but mostly lower level gods. And on the eighth dimension is where higher gods live at. You talking about your Abatala, the Abatalas and the uh um um you know the uh, Asar, hey Ru, and all these different higher uh, elder gods, uh Ganesha, Lord Ganesha, they all live in the higher eighth dimensional realms of existence. Mm -hmm. And once you pass that, you get into what you call the overworld, which is in a spirit world what they call the aim, right? It is the realm that it cannot be perceived, but we know it's real. But as a human, you don't have the brain or the capacity to really understand what it is. Mm -hmm. capacity, but you know it's real because that's where love comes from. That's mm -hmm. where love comes from. So that's what all the dimensions, that's pretty much the basis of what they are and where they uh, what, what they're about. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people here, you know, um, since they're viewing this show, they see movies like The Eternals. The Eternals. Um, would, are, would we be comparable to the Celestials in the movie, The Eternals? Would that be more of what we represent? Because you had the Celestials, they made The Eternals. So would that be us? Um, I would say the Celestials will be more of a demigod. A demigod, okay. Because Celestials still use technology. Mm -hmm. It's not so much spiritual, right? It's not so much spiritual. When we talk about like the one above all, anybody knows about comic books, know about the one above all, 
then you talking about on God level, on a God level there, right? Mm -hmm. Even if you hear stuff like uh, uh, they got a comic book now where uh, Iron Man merged with something called the cosmic, the cosmic power or power cosmic or something like that. Mm -hmm. You still are a demigod, mm -hmm. right? But a demigod because it's not a full fledged spiritual deity, and that's that's what I talked about before with the Anunnaki, how they 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 use technology, so they they got stuck, which is why we exist now. You know what I mean? So. They try to do this thing all over again. So I look at the and the celestials as the people who created them as, tech, as, as demigods. Because if you study the comic book, there's people that's even more powerful than the celestials. You know what I mean? So that's kind of how I look at them. Indeed, indeed. Uh, once again, so so you're in agreement when people say um, love is the highest frequency, or some people say gratitude. You're in, you're in agreement with that. Absolutely, absolutely. Love is mm -hmm. definitely the highest frequency, um, and it comes from a realm that cannot be perceived. And mm -hmm. when the energy comes from a realm like that, you it's really hard to control. You can't control it unless you have the right mind, body, and spirit. Mm -hmm. So this is why I say all the time, uh, people fall into love. You nobody chooses to love. If you think you chose to fall in love, you, this is what you call earth love. So there's two forms of love. You have an earth love, which is a love that is based in the earth realm. So if somebody give you some good sex or some good make you laugh, some good food, this is what you call earth love based on dopamine. Right. And love is the type of love that makes you think you in love with a person. But after about a, a year or two, y'all break up and ain't really or y'all get back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But mm -hmm. pure love usually can only be experienced through a child when you have your first child. And then here's a person mm -hmm. for you. Ain't done mm -hmm. nothing for you, but you have love for this person. You don't know why you love this person so much. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't know why you love this person. That's what you call uh, pure, unconditional love where you're not looking for nothing back from that person. It's just pure love. And you don't know why you love this person. It just is. what. Because you ask the person right now, why do you love your son or why do you love your daughter? They say, because it's my son, it's my daughter. But that doesn't really answer the question, <laughs> you know? And the question yeah. is, the thing is, you can't explain it. Love is explain it. That's why I say love is, con is connected to dark matter, or what we call dark energy in the universe. Mm -hmm. And that is, the, they call it dark energy because it's an energy they don't really understand. So when you ever hear about something called dark or a dark terrestrial, which is what they call the, the entities that are beyond the world. They call them dark terrestrials because those are dark, meaning that it can't be perceived. It's not really understood, you know, but we know it exists. So love comes from that thing. Love is a dark energy. It is a dark energy. And that's why the alchemist, it is the energy the alchemists use to transmute metals into the real alchemists, where they could pick up something and literally transmute it. They use the power of love, which is not easy mm. to tap into. Because you can't really choose to tap into it. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. All right, man. We 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 getting going. This is uh this is a, a great show, family. I hope everybody in the chat is enjoying what's going on. I mean, this is a powerful sh a show. So, brother Yosef. So, let me ask you this: Since love is the highest frequency, my and, and and my definition of love may be different from somebody else's definition of love. Like somebody else may see what I'm doing freeing the people from the minds of the programming and they may say brother Rich is doing a great job a christian may see what i'm doing and say that brother that's not love that's evil right there so um and and, and they think what they're doing is love uh, uh, do we still meet each other at the same like like you know what i'm saying like say our souls leave this body the brother might see me where he at and be like damn how this nigga got here i think it was a demon down on earth like are we still going to the same love uh place when we leave here Yes. At the end of the day, everybody will evolve. Some people, it just will, it just may take more lifetimes for some people. But eventually, if you have a soul, I won't say everybody, but I would say if you have a soul, because there are what we call soulless people on this planet, which are very, very few. But you also have people who are missing soul fragments, mm. you know, and I'm one of the people who believe that the European has a soul, but the European is missing parts of the soul. So it doesn't have full access to a soul. That's what's going on with the Europeans. So, uh, um, um, but when it's all said and done, but but anyone who's making soul fragments can still grow soul fragments based on their spiritual work. They just have to work a lot harder, right? Mm -hmm. But it's all said and done, brother. We all going home. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. And it's not the fourth dimension. It is not the mm -hmm. fifth. Dimension. Don't get me wrong. I have seen some places that made me cry. <clears throat> that made me cry. Places that made me lose my mind in the, in the, in, the, in, the, in the, what I've seen heaven states. Stuff I've seen colors that I never saw in my life, mm. but not home. 
And a lot of spirits, when they leave here, they choose to stay there for a long time. And that's fine. But that's not home. Our home is the place that cannot be perceived. It is the seat of your, the place where your soul comes from, which is the primordial world, which is beyond mm. existence. Mm. Indeed. Wow. I mean, that when you say that, that's a, uh, that's something beautiful, man. To say you've seen colors that don't even exist. You know what I'm saying? I, I've seen, I've seen colors that, that I've seen, I've seen, that's when I started realizing a lot about how limited my mind was, like about mm. the spider angels, right? Mm. I've seen angels that look like ex insects. That has to mm. look like choppers, but they're angels. Mm. And in a dimension, just like you have humans here, you have mm. all insects in that dimension. Mm. And if you study extraterrestrial, they got something called the insectilians, right? Mm. Insects and stuff like that. That stuff is very real. And you have aliens that look like graves. You mm. have aliens that look like all kind of stuff. You know, you have you have you have um all types of angels and when I went to these realms and I saw these these smells that I never smelled before, my brain was on overload because I've never experienced it. Mm. Right? It's like a it's like a virgin. You forty years old, you a virgin. You having sex for the first time with, with with the person of your dreams. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It, was, it was overload. So that's how I was, man. And uh, but I still wasn't home yet. I knew that this ain't it. It's something even if something is greater than this, it's gonna blow my mind. Mm. It's gonna blow so, my. Mind. So when you astral travel, like you said, you went to a place where the, the angels look like insects. What kind of intention do you set out? Like, like, describe the process. Are you purposely wanting to go to these places or or you just wind up in these places? OK, OK. So it, it's two ways that I, I deal with that. So one way I haven't mastered, and that's astral projection. But astral travel, as your consciousness grows, right, if you're doing mm -hmm. spiritual work and your consciousness, your awareness is starting to expand. Your dreams reflect that. That's a fact. Your dreams will reflect that. Once that starts to happen, if you're reading spiritual books about angels, you're reading spiritual books about certain places, your consciousness will start to go to these places without you even having control. So a lot of the first time I went to what I call a heavenly state, I didn't even choose to go there. It just, my consciousness one night just went there because it's like, okay, you reached this level. You can see this now. And what I said about that is that once you see these things, there's no going backwards in spirituality. Mm -hmm. I want to let everybody know that that uh to be clear on that once you go to a certain level of spirituality there's no coming back there's no going backwards you can you can do what they call uh uh you can pause <coughs> but you cannot go backwards you can only stop where you started at mm -hmm. so it's about consciousness the second level is what you call astral projection that's when you can actually take your astral form and put it into the physical world the third dimension mm -hmm. now you can see the vatican like i've seen in you know, I, well, I'm never able to go to the Vatican actually to see the Vatican. Uh, you can go to uh, all kind of places around the physical world. You can go to Japan. You can go to Asia. You can go to Alaska. You can go see if the Earth is. You know, you can see anything you want. You know, and that so I want to make that very clear because I get that question a lot. It's a difference mm -hmm. between astral projection, which is to project yourself out of your physical body, which y'all mm -hmm. haven't even mentioned yet, but I do it at least two times a month. It just. Mm -hmm. I feel my whole body vibrating, and I always feel my body lifting out of the bed real slow, just like that. Mm, you know, mm. Look, see my wife, I said, I'm out. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> and, and I'm going to tell you where it's a lot going on. If you ask for Jay, you go to a graveyard, oh my God, it's live in there. Mm. It's live in there. I don't, don't want to get off the topic. But so that's one thing you can do, ask for Jay. And the other thing is ask for travel. Once you ask for travel, you must become what they call an awakened dreamer, mm -hmm. which is so called a uh, lucid dream. Mm. You can get to the point of lucid dreaming. Once you get to that point, you can wake up in your dream. You can go wherever you want in the astral plane. Just think about it, and you're there. But mm. if you don't have the consciousness to think about something that that's beautiful, you won't go. You have to wait for your consciousness to get you there. Mm. But yeah, what I recommend people doing is uh, getting to the point where you become a lucid dreamer. Mm. So, so I like to use um, uh, personal examples. I feel as though that helps people um, understand this information better. So let me give you a personal example. Uh, since you said, you know, with, with, with the astral realm, you're pulling something from the fourth dimension to the third dimension. I, you know, I, I tap into my meditation a lot, my, my imagination, I mean, and I do it a lot through music. Like I put my headphones on and I'll just vibe out, I mean, whether it's taking a walk or whether it's, you know, I got candles on and it's dark. So I used to, years ago, I would be, um, I would be visualizing. This is when I started working with Cam Bada. So I'll be visualizing, imagining us having success with our music, and I'm just, you know, I'm vibing out. I'm in my childlike state. I'm not caring what's around me, and I kept feeling 
like a like a child energy around me. And I'm like, what well, damn it in my mind? I'm like, what the hell the child? Why why do I keep thinking of a child, a kid, a, a kid or whatever? And I'm like, I'm trying to think about getting it popping with my music and a, a child energy kept, you know, I kept feeling it or whatever. And then like a couple of months later, that's when that's when my girl got pregnant. Mm. And I'm like, yo. Yeah, I was just um, I kept feeling a child presence. I'm trying to think about one thing, and I keep feeling this. So, what would that be an example of? Because I didn't purposely want to feel that child energy, but right. I just kept feeling it while I'm trying to think about my music. Yeah, absolutely. So that would be a, a that was probably your child observing you before it came down. Mm -hmm. That was your child observing you. My, we all pick our parents before we come down. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. So you chose your mama and daddy for a reason. I chose my mother and father for a reason. And mm. back in the day, we would choose them based on what they wouldn't give us. But now the children, they are choosing the parents based on what the parents will give them. These, mm. these children coming down. Because mm. if the mama and daddy ain't spiritual, the children will see an auntie or uncle in the family that's spiritual and say, okay, I can get with Uncle Rich. You know, mm. <clears throat> no, this person ain't going out and going on, but I'm going to come down through them and get with Uncle Rich and I'll be all right. That's how these mm. big coming down them. <clears throat> so that's what it is. So my daughter, before she was born, I would me and my wife was trying to figure out a name. And this is when I started to actually develop clear audience. I would hear stuff at night and, and all of a sudden I heard a voice say, Call me Nubia. Mm. Call me Nubia. I heard it clear as day. And I and I, when I turned around and I said, What do you think about the name Nubia? She was like, Where'd you get that? I said, I just heard it in my head. She said, I love that name. And when I named my daughter Nubia. Mm. It just came to me, you know. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, the, the parent, the children will observe the parents before they choose them. They will watch mm -hmm. them, and then they'll come down through those womb mm -hmm. doors. Excellent, excellent. So they 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 know we're in the realm of imagination, and they like poking us or something, you know, whatever. Let us know. Yeah, yeah they, they 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 poking us, and they they observing. They observe you. They want to watch how you move and what's going on. It's like you meet your parents before you even really meet them. So mm -hmm. at that point in your consciousness, you are a you are more grown up than a baby. So you are like a, if you want to call it an adult soul, you most likely the child in the past life, lived a whole life, passed away, and they are in the realm as that person. They're just a pure soul and they get ready to come back down. So sometimes mm -hmm. they observe the parents before they come down. And mm -hmm. sometimes they know, okay, the parents got this going on. Uh, you know, that's, that's going on. Daddy a gangster, mama doing this. They know. Mm -hmm. They see the possibility of the future mm -hmm. of what could come out of them being born through this bloodline. And then a lot of times the babies come back. And, and, I, and actually, I've actually seen the realm of womb doors. And what it looks like is a bunch of just, you see a bunch of entities standing around this big circular uh, version of light. That's all you do. You see them standing around there. I don't know who these babies are talking to fully, but <clears throat> they, they observe time is different in the spirit realm. So they observe the parents' whole life and what's going to happen. Mm. They can see the future, what's going to happen with the parents all before they come down. Mm. Before they come mm -hmm. down. The woman is the key. Mm -hmm. So, so we talked a little earlier. For those who were here earlier, we talked about the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth dimension. Um, when our ancestors, like, let's say somebody's mother passes away, is she going to the fourth, the fifth? Like, what, what, what happened? What, what realm does exactly do our our recently passed ancestors go to? Okay, I, I'm gonna be honest, man. Um, for a long time, our ancestors go to Lord. Now, I'm, I know. Everybody wants their ancestors to be hanging with the other ancestors in the sweet by and by. That's just mm. not how it goes all the time. Mm. A lot of the ancestors need help mm. because they have no consciousness. See, you go based on your consciousness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if your consciousness is low, then you're going to go to a place where a low consciousness. So if you hustled all your life and you never did nothing to help nobody, and I'm not saying that you got to be a good person and go to a higher realm, but what I'm trying to say is that a person with a higher consciousness will help people. That's just what you do. When your consciousness is higher because your vibration is higher. So if you just rob people, you stole from people, and you was a gangster, you never did nothing for nobody, most likely when you pass away, you're going to go to a low realm of, of existence. And I've seen mm -hmm. those places. A lot of mm -hmm. times, our ancestors go there because they have no consciousness. Mm -hmm. So if your grandma or your grandpa was in church, your auntie, your uncle, please help them. Burn some ancestor money. Make an ulcer with some, with some food on there for them. And just mm -hmm. help them. Give them light. Give them energy. Right, because they need it, they need it, and then you do have some of our ancestors who have a little bit more higher consciousness. They go to the fourth dimension, the higher, the regular uh, realms of the fourth dimension. But what happens is, 
they don't know they did it. So they'll just be walking around looking like zombies. And, and they'll have on the same clothes from 1970s, uh, the 1960s, whenever they passed away, the same two. And that's how you'll know what time a person passed away, usually by what they got on. But mm -hmm. they'll just be around just walking, like aimlessly, aimlessly mm -hmm. the astral plane until they wake up. And when they start waking up, and you can help them do that by feeding them energy through the altar, they wake up, then they can actually go in a cycle mm -hmm. of either coming back or going forward. Mm -hmm. I think I asked you this before, um, as far as energy, as far as the altars, and let me just ask this again, since you brought it up and it's important, a lot of people are curious about what to put on their altars. Um, we are taught in this realm to eat electrical foods, uh, any food that like, you know, green, green greens, um, apples, fruits, vegetables, but when it's time to put lay food on the altar for our ancestors, we give them candy and things like that. Now, candy is not an electrical food. Candy is a processed food. A hamburger maybe is a processed food. It's not electrical, but yet we're giving we're giving it to our ancestors for energy. So if it's not electrical, how are they getting the electricity or the energy from it if it's a processed food to begin with? That's a great question, brother. That's a great question. Because they're getting a different type of energy. Um, once it's based on consciousness and light when you're dealing with the, the ancestors, because I'm going to be honest. When the ancestors pass away, the soul is already gone. The soul is about to come back or it's going on to a, another, another realm. What stays behind is a sliver of the spirit of that person. Mm. And we call that the astral form. It stays behind. And usually it's pretty weak because people haven't worked in their astral body. And they mm. should. Mm. But it's pretty weak. So a sliver of the spirit is left behind. Mm. And like, like prime example, brother, believe it or not, me and you, we got forms of astral body of our past life in the astral world that's still up there. Mm, mm, astral mm. forms could be up there for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years. Mm. The people who's feeding them, if, if, if people are feeding them. So <clears throat> the, 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 is, is the, the, the whole purpose of the astral body or the, the people when we pass away is to really help us. But we haven't mm. been talking to science for so long. And we used mm. to teach science back in Africa. We will feed our, and they still do it today, but Majority of black people don't do that. We don't feed our ancestors. Mm, mm. Small people but that know the science now. <clears throat> At the end of the day, the sliver of the spirit is left behind, and that spirit is supposed to develop enough energy by way of us feeding the spirit to help us in the physical world. And usually our ancestors can help us do magic. Mm. They can help us manifest things. But once again, as African-American people here in America or indigenous people, we totally don't know the science. So it's mm -hmm. so many of our ancestors that are just walking around aimlessly and don't have help. Mm -hmm. That help. So that's what it is. I don't want to get the soul confused with the spirit that's left behind in the astral form. The soul is already mm -hmm. going on the next experience. Mm -hmm. So you just leave a copy of yourself behind. That's what that is. Man, if y'all ever catch me eating a cheeseburger, I'm going to say, listen, man, this is a different kind of energy that my ancestors eat, man. Be yeah. like, yo, the ancestors eat this. If it's good for them, it's good for me. But what you say, brother? Let me, let me, let me ask. That's the part I forgot to answer. So yeah. it is family is that it's just energy. So mm. being that they don't have a physical vessel no more, they don't need to, they don't need food to sustain them to keep them alive. They just looking for energy, period. Mm. So a piece of candy has energy. In it. it may not have the most energy. So yes, feeding your, your ancestors electrical foods, but a lot of times to even pull them to the altar, you got to give them the stuff they like. Mm. You got to give them a cigarette. I know it sounds crazy. But if your uncle smokes cigarettes, that's the stuff he like. You have to give him a cigarette, right? It, and then it got it got it got energy because we program the energy into it with our intent. Everything is energy, and you must understand a, a, a cigarette will kill the physical body. It won't kill a spirit. Mm. Kill a spirit. So I know it sounds crazy, but everything is energy. Sometimes your ancestors won't even come to the altar when you put the stuff out. So in order to draw them, if your granddaddy like his coffee black, put some black coffee up there. Mm. Black coffee. If he like a pork sandwich, I'm telling you, that's what it is, right? Mm. Mm. Draw, but that's what the occult is. So <clears throat> at the end of the day, everything is energy. So they don't eat the food to sustain them for, for a living life. It's mm. just that they use it for energy. So I've seen the ancestors take the energy of food and uh, ancestor money and put it in their face like this and rub it in their face. I've seen them do that. You know, so it's all energy, family. That's why even in the voodoo culture, or the Orisha culture, they'll give them cigars, you know, mm. they'll give them all kind of stuff, whatever they like. <clears throat> so, yeah, mm. Mm. energy. Man, shout out to everybody. This is definitely a top 10 show so far this year, family. I'm, I'm loving this conversation. This is a magnificent
much, a very, a ne I was about to say much necessary. I don't know if that's a word, but it's definitely a necessary conversation right now, family. Brother Yosef, a little earlier, I gave you an example of something that I felt in the imagination realm when I felt my son before he was he incarnated down here. Give me an example, one of the most interesting examples you have of something happening to you in the astral realm, how it happened. Give us the details, man. We want to know, brother. Come on, man. Okay, okay. Hold out. Come on. Okay, so I, I go back to um, a time when I was uh, doing a lot of left-hand path work heavy. What is, that? What, what is that, left-hand? What do you mean? What is that? Left-hand path meaning, I don't like to call it that, but because everything is really magic, but left-hand path meaning I'm pulling more from the from the uh, from the side of chaos, okay. I'm dealing more with chaos energy, right? Or what we call a chaos magician. That's when I was studying. That's why I was heavy in a Bobby Hemmings, <laughs> you know, back in the back in the old days. I was on that on that path, heavy dealing with demons, mm -hmm. I, I, and that's why I know so much about metaphysics now because I, I walk on both sides, right? That people want to call me that. Now I tell people if you call me anything, just call me a metaphysician, because I understand now magic is magic. But I called it the left hand path. So I was doing with chaos energy very heavily back then. And uh, <clears throat> for years, brother, for years and years and years, I used to have this, I used to go to the astral plane and I used to always have this werewolf looking thing chasing me, brother. Wow. I mean, 10 foot tall, boom, boom, boom. And every time I see it, I just wake up, be scared to death. And some people heard me tell this story before, right? Mm -hmm. well, every, I mean, for years, brother, this thing that just, out of the blue. I remember one time I was talking to my mama in the astral plane, you know, and I was talking to her spirit and I seen it running down the street. I took off, left mama behind. Boom, you know. Yeah, wow. Like, left mama? And I woke up. Mama? <laughs> right. Uh -huh. I, know I, was dreaming. I know I was dreaming. So I like, come on. I woke up, right? But one particular night, brother, I'm flying in the astral plane. I land on the train and brother, I look down the hill and I see it. Here it come again. So I say, you know what, man? It's like a bully, bro. It's like, man, I'm tired of running, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm not running no more, bro. It's going to be what it's going to be. You know? So here it comes, brother. This thing running like a bat out of hell. It's running. It's like it's like the, the train was up on the hill. And um, I was in the back of this train, and I seen this thing running down the side of the side of the hill. It's running, bro. Full speed. So it's up the hill, and now I back up into the train. So it jumps on the train, brother. And literally, when it jumps on the train, I remember the train the platform bending. Like, this thing was so heavy, and, and it put his claw, and it looked like a werewolf. I don't know what the hell it was. It looked like a werewolf. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, brother, it coming up to me, and I'm like, man, you know, I don't know what's about to happen. It is what it, it gets on one knee and puts his hand out like this. Mm -hmm. And this whole time, this was my energy. My left mm -hmm. hand the energy of chaos chasing mm -hmm. the spirit world, trying to let me know I'm your power. Mm -hmm. You're running your power. You know, mm. you're running from your own, but go sick me, go, go sick me and do something. And I'm like, wow. what? so when it wow. did that, it this green energy just went inside my body. And the whole time, brother, I'm running from this scary, evil thing. I was running from myself. I was running from myself, brother. And that's one of the most craziest, scariest, weirdest experiences I had because it happened over a course of years in the spirit world, brother. So, yeah, that's one of my stories, man. Man. A lot of these images that we see, like let's say, let's say gargoyles or even the horns, like well, I said, the cover, this cover scared people. These these images are actually uh, they're, they're ancient and and they are energy. And we and yo, it's it's crazy, man. Like you just said, you run it from your own energy based on your your human programming, man. That's crazy, that's the, man. Like that's what happens a lot when people come to me in consultation, yeah. brother Yosef, the shadow man chasing me. I tell them turn around and face him and watch what happens. It's either going to run away from you or it's going to start talking to you. Because a lot of times in the spirit world, if something's chasing you, you're doing it to yourself. Hmm. You're doing it to yourself. That's a fact. Hmm. Most of the time I encountered in the spirit world in the astral plane that I ran from was a part of my own self. Hmm. And, and it's the subconscious energies that you're dealing with or something you build up over time that's trying to communicate what you're trying to get to you and you're running from it. That's what it is. Hmm. I mean, black, black people, black indigenous people, we're scared of everything anyway. So if we see a bright, beautiful light, we're going to run. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's what it is, you know? Mm. No, no, indeed, indeed. Um, we're about to get to some Q&A, family. Cue up your q and A. I I know they've been asking questions from the beginning, so I don't want to keep them waiting too much longer, man. But this has been an amazing... Yeah, yeah. 
I want to give people some tips that can help them lucid dream better at night real quick. Um, one of the first things is fasting. If you want to have a powerful lucid dream that night, say you want to meet an angel or you want to meet a higher energy, don't eat the whole day. Just drink water. Mm. Drink water because the stomach is also considered the second brain. Mm. And if that part of your body ain't working at night, all the energy is going to go into your astral body, naturally. Mm. It's going to charge mm. your astral form. So one of the best ways to charge your astral form is fasting. Mm. You know? So everybody don't like fasting. I don't even like fasting like that. But when I want a result, and I, I don't eat that day. Mm. I just pound a lot of water or juice and don't eat. And you will have a lucid dream experience. Another thing is harataki. I've been talking about that since 2018. The herb harataki, which the medicine Buddha is holding in his hand. And mm. another thing is uh, 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 gold, monotonic gold. If you take some of that before you go to sleep too, that will help you actually travel as well. Mm. Any, any, you, 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 you're always, you're known for always showing books. Any books you would recommend? As yeah, far as, um, reading the book before we talk, start talking to you, the Me Too Netter. Mm. The and the reason why I'm saying this, family, and it's funny, I had to rebuy a copy because my old one is so torn up and I had it for so many years. But mm. I love this book, how it talked about how the creator created everything in one realm. And when the creator walked into the physical realm, it created everything came into the physical realm with it. I love mm. that it's dealing with the objective and the subjective realm. And you guys can read that in there because <clears throat> we need to understand as melanated people, you are naturally fourth dimensional. Dr. Africa taught us that. I say mm -hmm. to the ancestor, um, mm -hmm. he taught us that you are naturally fourth dimensional beings. And I did the research and it's hundred percent true. The fact mm -hmm. that your antennas your defy gravity. So if you're made in God's image or imagination, you are created in a fourth dimension. And what happened was you fell down to the third dimension. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. So in one version of Genesis, they say God created, you know, him, uh, man and woman, right, in his image. But in another version of chapter two, it'll say the lower God, which is a lower version of God, created a human. And that's a human creating a human. So mm -hmm. that's something else. So that's what that is, family. So I, uh, um, I don't know how I got off on talking about <laughs> the black people in the, uh, the hair, but I had to, so I wanted to get that out, family. No, definitely, definitely important information. Definitely important information, family. Also, get the mental nature. Yeah, indeed. Also, family, uh, before we get to the Q&A, family, I want to remind you, if you are enjoying this show, be sure to donate to the channel uh, and support those who support you. It's very important uh, for us to continue to having these type of conversations um, on the internet, it's so not often where you can find this conversation, brother Yosef. What's your uh, cash app? I want to put it on the screen. Dollar sign, bro Yosef. Dollar sign, bro Yosef. All right, and I got uh, brother Yosef's. Uh, where is it? Okay, on the screen. So yeah, family, make sure you support. Um, very important, man. Um, you know, uh, sharing that currency with each other. Um, let's get to some Q and A. We got about 1,900 people in the building. Y'all been asking questions since the very beginning. I don't even know where to start with the Q&A. But um, let's just, uh, let's see. Um, hmm. Mm -mm. Well, let's, uh, hmm. Trying to figure out where to start finding good questions since it's been flowing so good. Let me just do this. Uh, what are some practical exercises one can do that helps develop their your third eye capabilities uh, like visualization skills, intuition, etc.? Okay, uh, absolutely. Uh, mudras, which we did a we did a we did a video about a lecture on here. Y'all can go back and watch that video on Brother Richards. I gave us some stuff on mudras. Uh, learn how to do some third eye mudras. That's going to really generate the energy to your third eye. Um, also, trace mineral drops is really good to to work on the third eye. Also, working with a uh, working with a uh, amethyst stone is also another stone. Uh, sleeping with it, um, and sleeping with it under your pillow is another way to help activate that third eye energy. Um, but yes, meditation, uh, 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 mudras, um, 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 mantras, speaking certain mantras for the third eye. All that stuff exists out there, family. Those are some things that can definitely help. This is an interesting question right here. They're asking, where is it at? Why, when I realize I'm astral planing, why do I wake up? 
Okay, uh, because your consciousness is not ready to see what you think you're ready to see. And, and that happens to people all the time. Soon they realize, oh, I, I'm in a lucid dream. They tend to wake up. Yeah. It's like, it's like the, the, when you change your vibration in the spirit world, you come back down to reality. Because sometimes people realize they're, 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 uh, they're uh, having an actual uh, a lucid experience. It scares them to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. And they wake up. So if you notice when you have a nightmare, you wake up right away because the frequency lowers. So mm -hmm. that's what happens. So that's what it is. Uh, you're waking up because your consciousness ain't ready to see what you're trying to see, family. You know what I could describe it at? Describe it as when, when when that has happened to me before. You know how um, you know I, you you wake up in a dream and you like oh yeah I'll be like damn I'm not dreaming and I'm, and I'm like oh shit I don't want to wake up yet and I'm trying to stay there. It's like I'm I'm lifting weights. You know when you go to the gym and you lift the weights. It's like I'm I'm trying so hard. It's like I'm using all my force to stay there and I can sustain it for about ten seconds and ah. It's just, I, it just, you know, I come back to this room and I be like, damn, because I tried my hardest and I'm like, Ugh. but with the, after a little while, I just, you know, I come All back right. here. Secret. The one thing you can do is start looking at your hands. If you start looking yeah. at your hands, it'll help keep you in a, in a dream a lot longer. I heard you say that before. Mm -hmm. I heard you say that before. Uh, great advice. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to try that next time that happens to me. I'm glad you said that. Um, somebody says, how... Then why is it? How often should we offer our ancestors ancestor money? Thanks. Um, if you're able to every day, every day if you're able to, I will offer it every day. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I will offer it every day. But some people can't. You get busy. Life happens. So I would, but definitely weekly. But every day if you can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh... <laughs> What about when you see your birthday numbers everywhere, every day, nonstop? Yeah, I get that question a lot, man. Um, that's a that's a uh, what you call a conscious cold. That's a part of your own conscious mind trying to wake you up. So mm -hmm. if you can see an 11, 11, 12, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever it is, I tell people to take that, put it under your pillow, and sleep with it. Sleep with it under your pillow. That will really help you. Uh, and your conscious mind will pick up on it. Uh, just by putting it in the pillows, and that will tell you what that number means to you, family. But that's that's the conscious cold. You're trying to wake up. That's what that is. Like when I start waking up, I would see my birthday 11 11. It just drove me nuts. It drove me nuts. So that's what that is. Mm. Um, what if you try to run and you move in slow motion? I've I've heard that question a lot. You move yeah, in slow motion. That, you don't have the astral energy. Your astral body's weak. That's what that means. I'm gonna tell y'all once you once you once you develop the strength in your astral body by way of your consciousness, look, you can manifest a shield just by thinking about it. You can take off and fly just by thinking about it. You can do anything you want to do. You can teleport just by thinking about being somewhere in the astral mm -hmm. plane. So it's about developing the consciousness, the awareness in the astral plane. I gave a video. I had a video called How to Grow Spiritually. I did a video on my YouTube channel, and I showed people how to obtain astral light, how to pull it in because if you pull too much in, you'll go crazy. You'll be turned into a lunatic. And you don't mm -hmm. want to do it. So it's a safe way you can do that to build your astral body. So yeah, that's what you that's what you can do. So it's it, 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 how you move in slow families because of your you don't have the energy. That's what that is. Mm -hmm. Uh why am I the only one in my fam interested in spirituality? I get that a lot also. There's usually a couple of people that's into this in the, in the whole family tree. Right. Yeah, uh, one of the reasons why you're the only one because you're there, you're there to wake the family up. You're there to change the bloodline. Now that doesn't mean that you're going to wake up everybody in your family, but what that does mean is that a new version of the family will start with you. So when you have mm -hmm. children and you start teaching your children spirituality, that version of the bloodline gets saved. So when mm -hmm. I tell people they're here to save their bloodline, I'm not literally saying you need to be on your mama and your daddy and your brother and sister every day tell them consciousness. What I mean is that you need to live your best spiritual life. And as you grow and evolve, pass that on to your generations and change the whole bloodline that way. Mm. Mm. So you're the Christ of the family. Mm. Uh, let me, I'm trying to find a nice, uh, somebody said, what have you seen or done in the astral realm that manifested into this physical realm? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of stuff. I don't uh, everything. A lot. Of, yeah, yeah, everything. A lot of things. Man, I don't manifest houses. Yeah. I don't manifest uh, businesses. Uh, money. Um. Uh, 
I don't. I, I believe I manifested a spiritual child by way of using the astral plane and sex magic. Use. Uh, I believe I manifested a spiritual child. Um, I manifested countless things, family. And as a magician, you just you practice and you you play with things because your 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 job is to get so get so attached to the to the spirit world or the fourth dimension until you can manifest things that will. You don't need to do a ritual every time. And I did a video called The Fourth Dimension Rise of the New Magic, and the new magic is in your mind. And the truth is, it's always been here. But as we go deeper into this fourth dimensional vibration, you're going to go into the realm of imagination. That's why you're seeing stuff out the corner of your eye all the time. Right? That's why you think about a person, they pop up. It's all fourth dimensional stuff. I just told you, like, when you in the, when you and your fourth dimensional body the correct way, you just think about being somewhere and you're there. So this is all fourth dimensional energy lining up. So now in the world today, I literally could just think about what I want. And put the right vibration and sit into it, and I promise you, it can manifest with whatever Indeed. I want. So that's Indeed. what that is. Once again, family, uh, the brothers' cash app is on the screen. If you want to support the brother, the brothers giving out some gems tonight. So you can hit the brother up on cash app dollar sign bro Yosef. All right, family. Let's get to the next question. What? Where's it at, Dan? This thing is moving. Um, I just had a. I just seen it, family. It was a question on flying. Okay. Uh, what does it mean when you can take flight and fly, my brother? What <laughs> that means that you, have a strong, you got a strong astral body. You know what I mean? That means you've done the work. And sometimes some people have that natural ability. Mm. Some some people uh have that natural ability where they can um have that you know from different past lives. They have that ability where they can um you know they can just fly. They're psychic from a young age. They can do all these things. So if you if you just take off and fly in, in the dream world, that means that you already have a strong astral body. Mm -hmm. I just saw mm -hmm. somebody in the chat say, where am I from? I'm from upstate New York, between mm -hmm. Buffalo and Rochester. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm from. So shout Indeed. out to all the people from Buffalo and Rochester in the chat. Shout out Buffalo. That's uh, Griselda, right? Griselda, That's yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Shout out Buffalo. Chester, uh, y'all. Are you able to evolve if you don't have children? Absolutely. <laughs> yes, you can still evolve if you don't have children. Um, <clears throat> some people in this lifetime here, based on the secret societies they belong to, and also based on the type of the type of uh, um, um, destiny that they have, they're not allowed to have children. Mm. You no. Know? So some of the greatest mm. teachers and stuff like that. They they won't have a child sometimes because they they have to just they down here to do the work. That's it. Mm. They down here to do the work. They not down here for no other reason. They not, they mm. already experienced in the past lives having children, having a wife, being in love, and it's like they just have want to be a spiritual teacher. I just want to have fun. Mm. They can choose that. That's what they choose. So a lot of them don't choose to have children. They come to do the work. They gone. That's what that mm. is. So yes, you can still evolve if you don't have children. Mm. Let me ask you this. You um you said that uh in talking about the astral realm, this is my question. You said that um, you know, when a brother asks uh the brother asks about moving in slow motion in the astral realm, he was like, Yeah, yeah, your yeah. astral body ain't that strong yet, right? So that's that realm. This is this realm, the third dimension. So when a soul tries to come, that's us trying to go to that realm. Now, when a soul tries to come to the third dimension and the and a mother, the the the, the goddess has a a miscarriage is it because that soul wasn't strong enough to come to this dimension? This dimension? Uh, no, that 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 you I, okay? I'll be honest. A miscarriage is usually when the the soul the child the child decided not to come. Decided so, not to. Okay. Yeah, the child the child decided not to come. And my wife went through a miscarriage before, and I know that's mm -hmm. painful for a lot of people. But when the child decided not to come down, it cut its contract and went back to the spirit world. That's when a miscarriage comes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course, an abortion is something totally different. What, why would a soul change his mind like that? Like, nah, I changed my mind. I'm good. What, I don't know. <laughs> it's a good question. It's a good question. The child may say, uh, I don't know. That's a good question. But the, the, the soul told not to come down. Mm -hmm. The soul told not to come down. And why it did, that's between that soul and whoever changed his mind. I'm not sure, fam. <laughs> mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. Uh, shout out, we got over 2,000 people in the chat. That's wonderful considering what we're talking about. Uh, that lets me know that a lot of people are definitely interested in this type of talk. Now, everybody that just came in, make sure you hit the like button, family. I appreciate you joining us. We had 222 right now. That's interesting. We had 222. Yes. So, uh, let's, yeah, you going to say something? No, I just say that's Gabriel energy. That's messenger. 
Oh, that's Absolutely. what that is? Uh, yep. Who's Gabriel? So talk to me about Gabriel. So we're in the year 2022. Who's Gabriel? This angel Gabriel. What does Gabriel represent? Let's, let's talk about uh, Gabriel is a, is, a, is a messenger. Gabriel is the is the voice. Is, uh, uh, the, the voice of God, the messenger. The uh -huh. That's kind of what Gabriel is. It's that messaging energy. Mm -hmm. So um, this is a year where a lot of people are going to get a lot of good messages that they need. Mm -hmm. And this is a year where people better listen. Mm -hmm. If you need to listen in any other time where people are saying you better listen this year, like I started in 2019, I, I'm, I'm sorry, in 2021, I said, look, y'all, in 2022, y'all better have a strong mind. You better get your mind right this year because it's very powerful. Like, that's what it is. And, of course, you take 222, two, two, it adds up to the number six. And six is the, is the energy that deals with community and family and love vibration. Mm -hmm. right? So, so that, if you notice today, a lot of people are talking about homesteading and going off grid. And moving on and and all that stuff. That's all dealing with the frequency of the energy uh that 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 is this year. So yeah, very powerful. Shout out to uh Brother King Simon, the master numerologist, man. He I know he could break it down a hundred times over <laughs> about yeah. besides what I'm saying. So yeah, very powerful, man. Very powerful. Man, I'm I'm glad you said that. I in my personal life, I just got a message that I needed, but I didn't want, but I got it. So I'm it's interesting that you said that. But after I got it, I'm like, damn, I needed that message. So yeah, yeah, I'm, lo I'm, lo I'm loving, I'm loving this talk. Uh, how do you charge? Somebody wants to know how do you charge your astral body, brother Yosef? A very good. That's a very good question. That's a very good mm. question. Um, it's like I said before, fasting helps charge the astral body, but also mm. pulling sun gazing, pulling that fifth dimensional energy light into your body. Sun gazing helps charge the astral body. Even though you're getting a fifth dimensional energy, it's going to charge this, the uh, the uh, astral body as well. Now, I don't recommend moon gazing. I know some mm. people. But I don't yeah. recommend it because too much moon gazing will drive you crazy. Mm. I promise you that right now. You'll become a lunatic. Mm. You don't want to do that. During a full moon, be moon gazing. Please don't do that. Right? Mm. So I did a whole... Go back. Go and watch my video, y'all. I did a whole video explaining how you can actually create an altar for yourself mm. and pull astral energy to your own body. It's, the, the video is called How to Grow Spiritually. So mm. it, and it's teaching people how to grow their astral form. Um, mm. But also meditation. Will grow your astral body, okay? Meditation will grow your astral body. Um, what else will grow you? Uh, doing certain spiritual work, yoga, stuff like that. Anything that will charge the spirit body. Um, well, there's also certain mudras dealing with the Ren energy that will help charge your uh your astral body. So that's what that is, family. Mm. Um, I guess somebody here just came into the chat. You could touch on this again. I think you pretty much touched on this. How does going to the astral plane help us in this life? They must have came in late. If you could just uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> the, the way it helps us in this life is that it helps us manifest. So mm -hmm. dealing with the astral plane in this life will help you manifest what you want in this life because the astral realm is the realm of possibilities, right? They're trying to turn the astral plane into the metaverse now. So the metaverse mm -hmm. will be false. The false astral plane will be the metaverse. Mm, mm, and I don't think mm, people shouldn't deal with the metaverse because if you want to be smart, you're going to deal with it for, for futuristic terms. Mm, because we guys, we don't run from this stuff. We deal with it. We transform it to our own reality. Mm, but the, I promise y'all the metaverse will be, and they got something coming out called the Omniverse. Ain't that, mm, ain't that. But the, the, the metaverse will be the new uh, astral plane on a, in a, in a, excuse me, I don't want to call it the new astral plane. It will be a, a, a false version of the astral plane. Mm -hmm. Where there's anything possible, you could be what you want to be, and all this stuff in that false uh, astral plane. I'm glad you said it. I haven't heard anybody say it like that, so that's very interesting. Um, because what did they say in the commercial, the Facebook commercial? They said this is the realm of imagination, yeah, yeah. and that's not true at all. That's the metaverse, the metaverse is not the realm of imagination, <laughs> that's what it is. yeah. You, you see how they know the occult science yeah, and they the, know, yeah, people. Stay away from all that spirit stuff. Manifested in the in the, in the metaverse. That's what they're trying to do. Mm. Powerful, brother. This this is powerful, y'all. This is powerful. Let's get to the next question. Can you, brother Yosef, speak about death and how we are taught incorrectly about death? Candy Kane got this question. Yeah, yeah. I just talked about that in one of my recent videos. Um, 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 um you know, people people run from death, but death. Need to be embraced on a certain level because every time you go to sleep at night, you learn how to die, you know. And death is, the, is, the, is just a transition, death doesn't really exist. Mm -hmm. So, death is the place where we all got to go through, it is the main gateway. 
Life is hell, right? Life is something what you got to make it. Life is a game. It's hell for people who don't know how to play the game. Mm -hmm. I, life is not to be taken seriously. It's to be taken as a game. Mm. This is a game. When you leave here, that's when the, the, the real thing starts. That's when your soul got stuff to deal with. But in this world, you must learn how to get the tools you need and learn how to play the game in life. Mm. And this is the transition. That's all it is. So death doesn't really exist. It's just a transitional term to take you to the spirit world, which is the mm. world. So that's mm. a short synopsis of that. Mm. Um, a new chaos wants to know why are there so many ch rainbow children being born premature? Um, I don't know about a lot of rainbow children being born premature, but I know that they're trying to vaccinate the hell out of rainbow children right now. Because wait, 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 don't 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 get this video taken down now. With oh, the, okay. The V word. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I know they're trying to do the, the jabba dabba do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, on the on the kiddos. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, and 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 what they want? Yeah, we don't want this taken. This is a good one. You know, yeah, it's a good one. This is a good one. Yeah, this is too this too good to go. Come on. Right. I'm so, yeah. yeah. Well, that was. I gotta be careful how I answer questions. But <laughs> so, um. That's what you do. They, they try to do that to the rainbow children so the rainbow children will have cannot develop into what they're supposed to be, develop into. But as far as them being born immature, I, I mean, uh, premature, I'm not too sure about that. I'm not, I'm not too sure about any, uh, a lot of the rainbow children being born premature, but I know they're trying to slow them down. I do know that. Mm -hmm. um, why can't we remember from ages one to four, then we remember when we turn seven, we wake up? Right, because uh, that's that's based on your ego. So you live subconsciously all the way until you're about maybe four years old. Your subconscious mind controls your whole reality. It tells you what to do, how you do. So you're not. That's how you are living. But when your ego starts to come on around three or four years old, the ego is your new identity. So that new identity starts to have a memory because you don't develop an ego until then. So when all the right programming has come into the child, the child develops an ego. So that's why you don't remember until you're about four or five. But some advanced people remember from the time they're born. My, my my stepfather could remember being in the crib when he was a baby. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And by the way, he draw and by the way, he could do things. I know he's a very advanced soul. So a lot of people are just very advanced earlier. Some people are lucky enough to even remember their past lives from a baby. But usually to answer that question, it's because your ego isn't developed. That's why you don't remember yet. Hey, you Brother, Yosef, yeah. Brother Yosef, do you think us remembering our past lives will be too much of a distraction to this life. That's why we chose to forget our past lives. Um. Yes, I I, I do believe that's why we uh we don't we we don't remember our, all your past lives inside of your soul. Mm. When when you do your uh acoustic records and stuff like that, you have different types of acoustic records. You have your own personal acoustic records inside of you. And you have one. You have the acoustic records on the astral plane, and then every dimension has a version of the acoustic records. Mm. But but you choose to forget so you don't get distracted exactly. So you can live your life and do it. And because uh, a lot of people suffer in this life, right? They suffer, they go through things, and they say, Why me? Why am I sick? Why can't I get Why can't I get married? Why can't I do this? A lot of that is based on your past lives and the things you've done. And if you are going to learn from your mistakes, you can't always remember what happened. The spirit wants you to learn naturally by you just going through it, and then something clicks inside of you. This is like waking up spiritually. Nobody told you. You don't remember being spiritual in the past life. But all of a sudden, something in your soul said, it's time to wake up. So <clears throat> if you spend a lifetime of stealing from people, and then all of a sudden you get ready to steal from somebody, you say, wait a minute. Something's telling me this is wrong. Mm. That's learning from the mistake. And that allows you to grow. Instead of you already knowing the answer, you, you defeat the purpose. Mm. You know, I, this brother here, Ken Shabazz, I had this question when you was talking about the moon, but I chose not to ask it. Because I wanted to get to the people's question. But when you said, the brother says, isn't the moon a reflection of the sun? When you talked about not moon gazing, in my mind, I said, well, if the moon is a reflection of the sun, then you're still sun gazing when you're looking at the moon. So how can that turn you into a lunatic? Because you're still moon gazing. Unless the light from the moon is different from the light from the sun. So talk to us about that, brother. Because the light, the, the moon, the moon itself, first of all, our moon was put here by mm -hmm. some other I did a whole video on that recently on my uh, Patreon, but the moon was put here by some other entities. The moon is a, it's hollow. It's not it's not real. It's a it's a it's a uh, 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 a false thing. It's not natural. We'll just say that it's not natural, and it's also hollow. 
It's a satellite in so many words. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gives off its own light, but also the sun reflects the light from it. And that creates a different type of light. Mm -hmm. And that type of light has a lot to do with your subconscious mind and your conscious mind too, but mostly your subconscious mind. And you shouldn't stare at something like that because the energy will have you in your imagination too much to the point where you can't live in reality no more. Mm -hmm. In your imagination, you can't, you start to lose the ability to know between this reality and another reality. Like that prime example, the TV show Moon Knight that just came out. I keep hearing about it. I keep hearing about that show. Man, it's crazy. He's only mm -hmm. moving because he's crazy. He's a lunatic. He's a lunatic. So if y'all watch Moon Knight, y'all will see what I'm explaining to be 100% true. So check that out, family. But that's what that is. And if y'all watch Moon Knight, everything I'm saying will, will be explained because the, moon, the, the, the lunar the lunar energy will drive you mad. It will drive you crazy. Too much of it. Too much of it. <clears throat> uh, somebody wants to know, how do we forgive ourselves from past lives and get those that we have hurt in past lives to forget to forgive us? That's a good question, family. Uh, be honest with yourself. One of the biggest problems we have as people is that we want to move past something, but we're not honest. We're not honest. We, we know what we said. We know what we did. Be honest with yourself and move on. If you feel like you, like I mean, I'm, I'm one of those people, I'm not a forgiving person. I'm not. I have a hard time forgiving because to forgive means to give something back to a person. I'm not going to forgive or give nothing back to you at all. If a person said, my mama, I could never forgive you. I can't forgive you. I'm not going to give you the power back to do it again and let you back in my circle. I can't do that. So I tell a person, forgive yourself. If you're going to give power back to anybody, give it back to yourself. Forgive yourself and control your reality. So sometimes people won't forgive you, so you have to forgive yourself for making a mistake. You move on. But the first thing first, be honest, fam. Be honest with what you did and be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. Let's get to the next question. I'm going to take about uh, four more questions, then I'm going to get out of here, family. It's four more questions. This is, this is an amazing show, family. Um, shout out to everybody in the chat. Um, what role does music play when it comes to the astral realm? Can spirits, yeah, I know this, this is good. I like, I can't wait to hear your answer. Can spirits be attached to a song? I like that. Ooh, I like that. that is very good. Uh, yeah, I like that. Brit Brittany, I like that. Because I'm pretty sure you guys all saw the, in the astral plane, when I had the experience with an uh, NT called music, mm -hmm. with the music, my face. Um, and I was on some kind of planet or something like that. But um, listen, y'all, I have heard songs in the astral plane by artists right here that has never come out before, right? I have heard songs. So what I'm trying to tell y'all is that a lot of songs that, well, all of the songs that artists get, they come from astral plane, down to the artist. So just imagine how many songs never, that the artist never put out that got into their head that they never worked on. I'm talking about, I heard Jodeci songs I never heard in my life. I'm talking about, I've seen the brothers in a circle singing, yeah. harmonizing. I'm like, I never heard this song in my life. This ain't no, Jodeci never sung this. Boys to Men. Um, Michael Jackson songs. Prince, I've heard all different types of songs that I've never heard in my life. I've heard music that I've never heard down here before, ever, in my life. So music plays a big part in the spirit realm. It's a huge part of the spirit realm. Vibration and, and tones in general is a big part of the, uh, the uh, spirit realm. And yes, spirits can be attached to songs because you can invoke or evoke spirits just by singing songs. That's a fact. Um, and this is why you call it something called back, back masking, where you can invoke a spirit subconsciously without even knowing it. Or you can program a person subconsciously without even knowing it. It's called back masking, right? Not to call it evil, but that's what some people do. They'll put stuff in people, you know, what they go, they got puff the magic dragon, and then backwards and say something else, stare away to heaven, you know. So, yes, that's the role it plays. And yes, the spirit can be attached to the to the songs, family. Man, I'm 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 a hell of a rapper in the astral realm, but down here I ain't a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just yeah, yeah, man. Let's um somebody says. Could Jesus, that other speak of, and the one you say doesn't exist, actually be of different parallel universes? That's a great question, man. Let me talk about that. You got so, some small people in the chat, man. You got some small Negroes, man. I love a challenge. I love a good question, man. Yeah. So, let me say something about Jesus, right? 
the physical person Jesus never existed, right? But the energy and the consciousness idea of what Jesus is does exist in the astral plane. Mm -hmm. Now, is he a god? No, he's an astral parasite. That's all Jesus is. Astral parasite. Wow. Astral parasite. Because Christianity is a religion that doesn't exist unless people give it energy. Mm -hmm. All religions are the same way. All religions don't exist unless you give them energy. The, the, now, you can't, there's no way you can have uh, millions of black people in America praying to one entity and that entity doesn't have a consciousness after a while. And all these millions of people are given one thought form. So Jesus Christ is a thought form, mm. a parasitic thought form mm. that feeds off the energy of the people that worship it. Now, is Jesus a God? Hell no. Jesus is not a God. Jesus is not real. But the idea, so if you got a bunch of Chinese people worshiping Jesus, he probably gonna look Chinese. Mm. A bunch of black people, I hate to say it, but he probably look white. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because of our mind. That was deep. Yeah, yeah. That was deep. In church, you know what I'm I see the fans. We we believe I, I thought Jesus was white all my life until I got out of church. You know what I'm saying? So um, so that's what it is. So that idea of Jesus does exist as an astral entity, but he is a parasite. He's a parasite. No, I never met him. I never seen him. But as an occultist, as a metaphysician, I know what happens when a lot of people put energy into one thing. It exists on the astral plane, but it's not real. It's just an astral parasite. That's a that's a very controversial title for a show. Jesus is an astral parasite. <laughs> we gotta come that's back to that. Jesus wow, is astral. <laughs> wow, that 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 man, listen, them Christians, man, I ain't trying to have y'all get at me on that one, man. Damn that. That's a good I name for a show, though, man. Wow. Yes. Um, <laughs> and shout out to all the Christians. A lot of Christians watch this channel. So shout out to all the Christians who um who watch this channel. I appreciate you uh watching the channel and growing by watching this channel because that's what I'm here for. All right. Uh let's get to the next question. Oh man, this is just such a good show. Um, so many comments. Uh, how to develop Sunya Chakra, brother Yosef? Do you know what that is? Sunya Somebody Chakra. Somebody click. Who answered? Who asked that question? Kale Jones. Oh. Kale Jones. Jones. <laughs> yeah. That's a. That's a. <laughs> Somebody trying to be slick. I always promise people I'm not going to talk deep about the left hand path. I don't teach it, <laughs> but I did give a powerful book out that. A lot that rocked the rocked this, you know, it, it's a powerful book. It's called Goesha, Goesha, Kabbalah, Kabbalah, what is it called? Kabbalah Caliphatic, no, Khalifa, Goesha, and Kabbalah Magic. Mm. Go get that book, and it talks about that book. So somebody's trying to tell me to how to develop, they're trying to teach, have me teach that science, and I'm not gonna show y'all that. Mm. That's mm. something that y'all gotta learn on the left hand path if that's what y'all choose to do. Mm. Mm. I'm not trying to get me mm. talk about it though. <laughs> Which means you're <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Somebody wants to know, Apoll Apollonia wants to know what to give the ancestors when you don't know what they like. Uh, just give them basic food that most people like. Give them a glass of water. Everybody like water. Uh, give them fruits and vegetables. You know, especially mm -hmm. the part of the South they was from, they most likely like the foods from the air. Like my grandfather was from Georgia, South Carolina, and he loves squash. Mm -hmm. So I put squash on my altar. Cause that's something he loved, you know. Butter milk. He loves butter milk. I put that up there. But if I don't know what else to put, I put apples and oranges, uh, uh, some, uh, you know, uh, pepperoni sticks, whatever. Chicken can't go wrong with chicken and black folk. So, <laughs> Hollow Vegeta said, "Book finna be a thousand dollars tomorrow." Yo, when you mention books, the next on this show, the next day the price be sky high, bro. Bro, let's go. I don't people know. watching the show and be like, oh, time to raise the price. Like, I don't really know, bro. I, I gave out an elixir, a spiritual elixir on one of my uh in my Patreon videos. And look, man, it shut the company down. They was like, look, we can't even fill the orders. We don't know what happened. All these people calling for this stuff. So, yeah, I don't know, brother. Uh, that book I'm talking about, Goetia, Kabbalah, uh, Caliphatic Magic, I bought it for $25 back in like 2011. Mm. And I can't believe that book. I saw it last for nine hundred dollars on on Amazon. So yeah, I'm blown away by that, man. Mm. Um, let's get to the next question. 
What does it mean when you see yourself die in your dreams all the time and you see it from both third point of view and first person point of view? This person so, is seeing himself die. So a person is actually seeing himself die in a in a uh, in a dream over and over and over. That means that your mind, your your energy of your uh, astral form is very low. Um, you will need to raise your consciousness immediately. It doesn't mean you're going to die. What it means is that you're in a realm where you're suffering. You're suffering over and over and over. I know because I saw that realm, and I had to actually rescue one of my cousins who died of a heart attack, and he was getting stabbed in the heart over and over and over in the uh, lower realms. So, family, if that's what's happening to you, you need to raise your consciousness immediately. Start doing spiritual work. Ra raise your consciousness. Start sun gazing. Raise your consciousness because pretty much you're suffering in the spirit world. That's what that represents. Hmm. Um, what do benefit from the Bible since Jesus has never existed and the Bible is stolen in comedic writings that were heavily edited? I don't really understand the question. I don't know if you... Uh, what do we benefit from the Bible? Uh, the Bible is a magic book. There's no benefit of growth except that there's a few parables in there, but the Bible is a magical book. And, you know, I'm, a, I'm a, you know, different. I'm part of different spiritual orders. And I can tell you the spiritual orders use the Bible. The Bible is a magical book. <clears throat> and if you know about the book of Psalms, it's a book of spells. And, you know, so the Bible is astrological and it's, it's, it's metaphysical. So it's not really that it's a benefit of it. It's that, it's that something you can learn from it, like as far as spells go um, or as far as astrology goes or as far as uh, parables. Mm. Uh, two more convergence of the Bible, too. Two more questions, family. Then we're getting out of here. Let me get to the super chat question. Bridget wants to know my mother has dementia, and I really think it's a spiritual attack. What do you think dementia is? Yes. So um, it is a spiritual attack because dementia starts with entities feeding on the astral body. And mm -hmm. when you pass away, family, you're supposed to take a memory with you. Your memories are stored in your astral body. That's a fact. Once again, I told y'all the astral body is just a part of your spirit. Your ego is also a part of your spirit. Mm. So that form of the astral in the astral world that think that is real or think that is Aunt Sarah or think that is Uncle Uncle Joe, that part of that, part of that person, it still has that ego connected to it. It has the memory of that person. So if you're losing memory, that's a, a that's the spiritual attack. And it starts early, it starts a small portion where a person doesn't even know. So mm -hmm. that is a spiritual attack, family. And um <clears throat> I would recommend seeing a priest or something, because most likely that person has an attaching spirit. But usually when they're old, it's usually too late. It's usually too late because that spirit is very deep and dwelled in that person. So it's kind of hard to reverse dementia at that point. But if a young person starts using their losing their memory early, which does happen. Um, I, then that person should see a priest to get that energy off of. But it's definitely uh, <clears throat> um, real quick. Somebody saying, um, "Brother Rich, I think your IG is hacked." Someone is asking me to donate to crypto. Yeah, there's an Instagram with the it's Black Magic three six three, and there's an underscore at the end. That's not me. There's an underscore at the end. But anytime anybody asks you about uh, DMs you about crypto, or do you want to read in? Family, that's that's a Nigerian scammer, probably. So that's no, right. that's that's not me, family. Uh, not right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So don't do not well, give me money. Somebody using my face and got an Instagram page, so it's not me either. Yeah, I don't know how much longer Instagram is going to survive not fixing what's going on. Instagram is a complete mess right now, y'all. A complete mess. So um, and maybe they're taking it on purpose for their for their metaverse. I don't know. But um, we're going to get to one last question, family. And I know we got about 2,300 people. I know you don't want to go, but I got to go, family. Uh, make sure you hit the like button. I appreciate you for joining us tonight. But let's get to this last question. Okay. Um, how is the sun in space and shines light on Earth, but there is no light in space? <laughs> That's a good question. That's because the sun is not in space, family. And Dr. Blair, shout out to the elder Dr. Blair. He broke that down a long time ago. The sun is not in space. The space in a third dimension, there's no space. There's no space. That's a hologram. So as we move in deeper into the fourth dimension, what's going to happen is 
something called a quarantine is going to be lifted. The Van, Allen, the Van Allen belt is going to disappear. That quarantine around the planet. And as we get into the higher vibrations, we'll actually be able to go into space. So Mars, Saturn, all these things, they exist, but they exist in the fourth dimension. They don't exist at third. You're looking at a hologram. Nobody ever really goes there. But soon we will be able to. They know it. And that's why the space stations and stuff is getting, they're preparing for this stuff. They're trying to take people into space because the quarantine is going to be lifted, family. We, we will be able to go into space. And that's when you're going to be able to see the, what they call the second sun that Dr. Blair talked about also. The second sun, which does exist too. Mm, man, family, an amazing show. Wow. Man, every time I have a show with this brother, it's it's electric. So, you know, I always look forward to bringing the brother on at least once a month. You know, the brother has his own YouTube page. He got his own Patreon. Let the people know. And I know you um you got like a um a lecture coming up or something. Let the people know everybody. Somebody, wait, hold on. Somebody said, Rich, please don't forget my super chat. Who did I forget? Um, but yeah, I'll say that real quick, brother. Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, my Patreon is uh, Brother Yosef on Patreon. Um, you can go to my YouTube videos right below the video. You'll see the links for it. Um, my YouTube channel is New Tools. Y'all can check me out on there. Also, I'm in Atlanta on uh, uh, June 6th. Uh, this year, we're going to do me, Conjure Queen, Will Capru, um, Dreamwise, Sister D-Ray, um, and Brother Travis Magus. We're all going to do a lecture called Technology of the Gods. Listen, y'all don't want to miss that. I got some dope information I'm going to drop up there. Um, but yeah, we're all going to be there, and that's going to be, you can go to Brother Dreamwise page, or you can go to my uh, community, and you'll actually see my, the link for the uh, for the for the lecture. Uh, let me get to the super chat question. I don't because they donate and I don't want to um, not ask their question. Mm -hmm. um, what does it mean when being hunted in vivid dreams but never getting caught? Being hunted, so you're being chased but you never get caught, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. That's to the uh, that's what I to about earlier. Yeah, if something hunting you. You it's you. You need to turn around and face that. So you need to get caught. So you can turn around and face and see why it's happening to you, family. That's what I recommend for that. Indeed. I'm just making sure I ain't got no unanswered super chat questions real quick before we get out of here, family. If I do miss your questions sometime, pardon me, family. The chat be moving so fast. All right. So with that being said, family, we're getting out of here. You left the, you left your um, contact info, brother? Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, y'all can email me New Life Tools. I know a lot of y'all want consultations, but I'm backed up. New Life Tools, uh, if y'all want them, y'all can hit me there. And like I said, y'all can also check me on my Patreon, New Life, uh, Bernie Yosef. And uh, also IG, uh, uh, New underscore Life underscore Tools. Indeed. Hey, family, with that being said, this Brother Rich Black Magic 363, the Brother Yosef, New Life Tools. Thank you for tuning in. Magnificent show, family. We'll see you next time. We out here, family. Peace. Peace, family. All right.